Up, 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 up. All right. Hello and welcome to anyone watching this past, present, or future. And welcome to another fun little installment of building Pokemon for D and D. Uh, and why don't I just get? Why don't I just get my interwebs all set up? We'll get rid of Magic Man. We'll get rid of Miscellaneous. Loading, and let's just open up the interwebs. We do, however, have to say hi to Giovanni. Uh, he has, um, he has an iron gr oh my god. So I always forget where Interwebs is located. Uh, but we do have to say hi to Giovanni, because Giovanni, um, he is, uh, he's a bit of a, a mafioso, and, uh, he has put me in crippling internet attacks. Debt, so, uh, well, he just pays taxes. I pay the taxes for him. That's very inconvenient, really. But tonight, we're gonna be going to our good old Pokemon for D&D. &D. And we're gonna scroll all the way bottom here. Because tonight, we're doing Subtile! Now, Subtile is. You know, I love all the Gen 3 starters very dearly. But I especially love the Shiko line. I think the anime very much sold me on Grovile, the coolest man alive. Um, with like his little toothpick uh, twig and his like saw it, like forearm leaf blades. Absolutely the coolest shit. Now, Zeptile does kind of bring it down a little bit. Uh, but like, still, he's there. Mechanically, he's just a better Grovile. I can understand, but yeah. And then there's of course Mystery Dungeon, which everyone screams about Mystery Dungeon. <laughs> Mystery Dungeon Grovile. All right. So why don't we just go straight into it? So our goals for Septile are a few things. One, we gotta climb. A lot of Pokedex entries for Trico, Grovile, and uh, Sceptile, the whole line, really revolves in how well they can just like climb trees effortlessly, almost like a gecko can, um, and how swiftly they can do it. Now, in D&D, a climb speed would normally reduce your movement speed by half if you wanted to, say, climb a tree or the side of a building. So we need to find a way to get away from that and just simply climb as if we'd normally move around. Additionally, we need to find the secret of Leaf Blade. Now, Leaf Blade, uh, nowadays, is sort of like a uh, fancy move a lot of other Pokemon can know. But back in Gen 3, Leaf, Bra Leaf Blade, not Leaf Braid. Oh, Pokemon music decided to get a lot louder. Let's turn you, let's turn you down a little bit. Best of Pokemon, four hours of nostalgic Pokemon music. So, the Leaf Blade, our goal here is specifically to capture the power of uh, Subtile's signature move, which is essentially uh, increasing his chance to crit uh, in Pokemon. Uh, it's simply grass type slash. Uh, but because of this, we need to find a way how we can boost our chances of critting in D&D. &D. Additionally, our last goal is to find a way to Mega Evolve. Now, Sceptile is known to Mega Evolve into a Grass Dragon type, so maybe that could give you a little hint to what we plan on doing in the future. Alright, so, that gets. Why don't we just, once again, go right on in? So, first we gotta think about what is Sceptile? Oftentimes, when uh, you know, we just gotta know, like, all right, if we're playing Sceptile. What are we? What, what's the first choice we pick? What race are we going to be? Which will affect our stats and other factors here. Now, my initial thought when making Sceptile was make him a lizard folk. Now let's get out. Let's get out uh, our good old friend Wikidoc here, and let's look over lizard folk. Because I sort of want to go over on, uh, ironically, why I'm not picking Lizard Folk uh, for this level. 
Now, again, initially I was thinking, oh, Septile's gotta be a lizard folk, because he's like an actual lizard. He's a reptile. He's a funny little gecko man. But that doesn't feel quite right, and I'll go over why here. Now, stat-wise, we get con and wisdom buffs, which is pretty solid no matter what class you play. However, for the build we're going for, they're not bad, they're not what we're looking for, but that's not always the most important thing. We get a bite attack, uh, which, alright, that's not bad, uh, always getting a natural weapon, though we're looking to use a lot more claws, if anything, if we had a natural weapon. Additionally, you may notice here on our speed, we get move 30 feet of movement and swimming speed which for septiles not what we're looking for at all. Septile's a climber, not a swimmer, so we would not get that big buff here. Uh, we could make... Uh, we could get extra proficiencies about nature, but it's about Subtile, because he tends to be a guardian of nature, according to Lost Pokedex, as well as an AC buff. However, I feel like with some of these movement abilities and it being more on water, uh, about like creating more tools. I don't feel like that's quite septile esque. So instead, we are going to go more into custom lineage. And the main reasoning why I'm going with custom lineage here is because we want to climb. And we should have our our sort of birthright to climb. So with this we can pick a feat. Now I want to get out the feats here and show you how we can climb immediately at level 1. We can climb the ranks right away. Jesus Christ, this audio level is so inconsistent. Alright. So, we're gonna go to the athlete feat for Septile. Now, the athlete feat is not the coolest feat in the block, but it's one of my, it's one of my feats that I look at and always go, man, I look at you when no one else does, and it's for a few reasons. One, it's going to allow us to get our dex or strength higher, which is going to be something that we want out of this build. We want these physical stats for this build. Additionally, it allows us to not worry as much about coming up from prone, only taking five feet of movement instead of half our movement if we get up from prone. We get to jump higher with less. We get to jump further with, uh, with less distance. The key thing is here: climbing doesn't cost extra movement. So with athlete, we essentially get climbing speed. And the only two ways that you can get climbing speed, there are three ways you can get climbing speed in D&D. One, you can do it magically through spider climb, which allows you to just climb like Spider-Man. You could become a third level rogue. Uh, in a specific subclass, or you get this feat, so we're picking this. So we're gonna do custom lineage, of course it's spelled out for the oh, double spell error, let's go. No, I want to correct, all right, cool. Lineage, custom lineage. For our custom lineage, we do get a plus two in any particular stat we want. So in that case, we're just gonna make that a plus two into dex. Additionally, we get the athlete fee. Which we see here, we get, we're gonna put our plus one also into dex. We're going really hard into dex here. We are gonna get climb speed we are going to get five feet up from prone which is always nice it's a good quality of life ability don't you make can you make a running long jump all right half as much move for running long jump Jumpo! Hey, Jumpo! Alright, 
So let's look back at some lineage because we do get another thing real quick. So, additionally for custom lineage, we get two choices. We get either Dark Fish, oh, we also get 30 foot movement speed. Yeah, we can get one more in there. Cool, cool, cool. Next, we're gonna go for either a proficiency or dark vision. Here, I'm gonna go more for dark vision. And it's simply because a lot of. Do geckos actually have dark vision? Can geckos see in the dark? Can geckos see in the dark? Because they're nocturnal. Cuckoos can see 35 better times in the night than humans can. Uh, they're able to see color at night as well. Oh yeah, they got they got dark vision. They've got dark vision. All right, that's okay because I know sometimes when we go custom lineage, we get really overwhelmed with uh, different uh, proficiencies. So we're just gonna get dark vision. All right, so that's level one for our. That's even just our race. Now with our background, I was kind of thinking between two minds here. I was thinking either we go criminal under the context of like Septile back when he was a Grovile doing the events of like doing the events of like uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon uh, Time and Darkness where the plot there is that Grovile is going around stealing these, like, precious artifacts to stop a horrific outcome. Or we can go full Kiro, because if I remember correctly from the anime, Ashes Trico was sort of like a local, was like the local guardian. And I do know that a lot of Septile's lore sort of talks about it being a guardian of, of nature. Why don't we actually check that real quick before we do anything. So we're gonna go to Septile. Septile Pokemon, not Smogon. We're not looking for competitive. What we're looking for is hard lore. Alright. So leaves grow on Septile's body are very sharply edged. This Pokemon is very agile. It leaps all over the branches for branches of tree and jump on its foes above, above or behind. Septile has seeds growing on its back. There are said to be bursting with nutrients that revitalizes trees. This Pokemon raises the trees in the forest with loving care. All right, in the jungle, it is power, power without equal. The Pokemon carefully grows uh, trees and plants and regulates its body temperature by basking in the sunlight. Sharp swords. Combat. Okay, so it's more talking about his combat skills, not necessarily being a defender. So in that case, I will kind of look at both and see which kind of fits better for what I want out of this build and the sort of mental picture I have of Septile. So with Septile, we do have with uh, Folk here, we do have some more nature positive abilities with stuff like animal handling and survival, as well as an artisan tool and driving. Uh, which, you know, I know a Pangoro, we were all surprised that Pangoro can drive, but hey, who knows? Who knows? Um, so those could be pretty decent skills, although I don't think, you know, meta wise, they may not be the most, like, powerful, but I do think they could be quite applicable to what, uh, you know, Septile being sort of a guardian of nature in particular, or at least going off the idea of ashes. But let's look at Criminal. Criminal's gonna have more, uh, deception and stealth. Now, they have described, 
uh, Sceptile being more, at least Ruby's entry describes uh, Sceptile as at least somewhat sneaky. Uh, or at least, like, you know, plays underhanded. But I don't think it's necessarily, like, like, yeah, it could be hiding around, but I think it really relies more on just speed. More so than it does, um, more so than it does, like, hiding. So, I think we're gonna go for more of these nature-based skills we see here in Folk Hero. Because I kind of like the idea for what we're going for with the narrative I have in my brain of Sceptile being a lot more of, like, a well-loved figure. Like, someone the people know of. You know? So, we are going to have the Folk Hero background. We're gonna have Folk Hero. And with Folk Hero, we're gonna have proficiency in animal handling, so... So, Sceptile will know how to... Uh, care and vibe check with animals. Uh, Sceptile will know how to survive on the land, which makes sense. Makes sense, Sceptile is a funny little lizard boy who lives in the jungle. Lives all alone in the jungle and protects it with its very life. Additionally, uh, Sceptile knows how to drive. He knows how to drive. Uh, what kind of artisan tools do you want Sceptile to have? Let's see what we can find in, art, in artisan tools that I think would be most applicable for Sceptile. Yeah, let's look at tools. We've got artisan tools here. Let's see. Oh, you know, wood carvers would be really cool, because I like the idea of, of going a bit more towards the anime angle of, of Sceptile knowing how to, like, carve uh, wood to, like, get those perfect twigs, know the perfect little toothpick, not cigarettes. Love that shit. Yeah, so he's gonna have... He's gonna have wood carvers... Off, and it makes sense. He's around the woods. He's got sharp blades. He knows what to do. He probably has a lot of access to it when he's not out there hunting and prowling around. So let's see what kind of uh, fun little things we have because I feel like it's always fun to look at what folk here, what backgrounds provide you. Uh, so we are gonna have that on hand, which is good. Uh, Septel just has a shovel. You know, for no particular reason. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, he may use it. Uh, he has got an iron pot, I guess, to cook. You know, just in case he's on the road. He's got mushrooms to fry. You know, when he goes when he goes out to, to Pendleburg Woods, you know, to get those uh, shrooms. Oh, I did. I did actually miss a lot of people because I realized I was a bit late uh, by like 15 minutes. So I appreciate you coming by. Just to catch you up to speed, we're doing Sceptile. We, our goals for Sceptile are pretty simple. We want him to climb trees to get him climb good. Uh, we need him to have a higher critical rate. We need him to increase his critical hit ratio, just like his signature uh, move in his uh, debut generation with Leaf Blade. And we're gonna find a way how do we can Mega Evolve uh, Sceptile. How can we capture the effect of his Mega Evolution about these levels. To find one of these answers, we got uh, custom lineage. Uh, now, originally I was looking at lizard folk, but which is usually just hi, I'm a lizard person, and that's my that's what I be. Um, and with that, uh, with them, they had a bite, which was pretty cool. But they also had swimming speed instead of climb speed as well as some abilities more around um, building things off of like what they kill. It's like, that's not quite Sceptile. 
So instead we pick custom lineage so we can get some get some movement speed, get a big dex buff, get the athlete feet, which allows us to have a climb speed just right off the bat, which is exactly what we want. We want to be climbing around doing wild shit. It also allows us to only use five feet of uh, movement to get up from prone instead of half our movement. We can. Uh, we only need to use 5 feet of movement instead of 10 feet of movement for long jumps. We also got some dark vision because geckos can see color in the dark. I think that's cool. He does become dragon type when he does mega evolve. Yes, yes, he does. Ah, yes, a demon most foul, of course. He lurk. Alright. And right now we were just talking about his background. Uh, we've decided for him to be more folk hero. I was debating on if I wanted him to be more folk hero or criminal. Uh, based on his main two interpretations in Pokemon Media of the anime, where the Trico Ash picks up is more like a local guardian for the other Tricos in their community as well as nature. Or would I go for more, um, more of the angle of uh, Mystery Dungeon's Grovile which is a lot more of like they were a criminal they stole these powerful artifacts for their own reasons but i looked at the skills and i like the more nature focused ones from folk hero that give us animal handling and survival um in doing so we've all septile knows how to drive uh septile can drive your honda prius um and he will hong kong he does have a lime green kia soul that's his own personal car so put that uh in the lore it's official uh he knows how to wood carve so he can have really cool sticks in his mouth as well as make cool little uh totems uh he apparently has a shovel an iron pot uh and he's got 10 bucks he's got 10 whole golden dollars now we look at his stats now his stats are gonna get pretty interesting. So, you may notice um, when we were doing our stuff of custom lineage, we went in all decks. So, unlike other things, unlike other races, usually you get a plus two to something or a plus one in a stat or even plus ones on multiple stats. Custom Lineage has this funny little quirk where you can have plus two to any stat you want and you can pick a feat. And a lot of feats are what many people call like half uh, ability score improvements, where you get a plus one to another stat. In this case, we have gone all in on decks. So right away, we're putting our 15 into decks, which now is going to become an 18 which leads us to a whopping plus four deck. So Septile is a very agile and very, very agile and a very quick footed and also incredibly flexible. And for the rest, I'm sorry, wrong window. For our next step, we're gonna put our 14 into Charisma actually. Then we're going to be putting our 13 into con. Actually? I'm thinking this over a little bit because of the build I want. And I don't know if we need to really worry that much about charisma. Here, why don't we make Charisma 14, uh, the con 14, and keep Charisma at 13. For what I'm thinking, we have chances to mess around with this, so I'm being pretty flexible with this, but I kind of want to see where this goes. Um, Yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright, I think I think we'll be good. 
So next we'll put in uh we'll put a twelve. Put a twelve for our wisdom. We're gonna have that. 10 be intelligence. Because we know, we know a good, like, nature is, like, nature is an intelligence stat, so I'm gonna have that be a neutral one, so we're not penalized on that. And I feel like Subtitle, like, knows common knowledge of God and magic, because he's in the woods. He probably has many encounters with druids, uh, and the like, so he probably has, like, at least a decent understanding of those kind of materials. And we're gonna dump strength. I feel like Septile. Septile is originally um, a special attacker in Gen 3, and the thing that makes that pretty wacky is that in Gen 3, Septile is really good at what Septile does. Um, because in Gen 3, types were special or physical uh, instead of by move. So... Septile is a lot of grass, dark, dragon move access, high special attack, and like decent physical. But it really translates poorly when you go on to other Pokemon games, where Septile is this really high special attack, but like maybe five special attacking moves, and the rest are very physical. There is legendary grass types. Yeah, there is Shaman, there's, uh, what's... There's Verizian, I think it's like that grass fighting type in Gen 5. Um, let's see, are there any others? There's Celebi. Duh, duh, there's Celebi. There's that new monkey one for Gen 8, but I don't know if it's legendary or if it counts as like mythical. Yeah, so in that case, yeah, be Celebi, Shaman, Monkey. Uh, Arceus, I wouldn't say counts. Yeah, there's Verizian. I think I think that would be your non-mystic. Here, let's double check. Let's double check the books. Ew, gross. Do. Celebi. Oh, there was that new. Yeah, there's the new, the newest legendary boy from Crown Tundra's also grass. Dude, Verizian isn't mystic. Verizian's acting straight up legendary. Because that's one of the three Musketeer Pokemon. Anyway, we're gonna dump strength. Because we don't need strength. Especially because we can always climb, so we never have to worry about... Never have to worry about climb checks. Alright, so now let's go for the first level. Now, for level one, we... I saw, I saw Hell uh, predict Ranger. Now, Ranger would be cool, uh, but it doesn't quite fit Septile. And here's why. Ranger is very cool. I like Ranger. Ranger is a class I feel a lot of people shit on, uh, even though it is very nice. Because I would say what I would recommend Ranger to be, Ranger is essentially a better uh, Eldritch Knight than Eldritch Knight, so they're a good way if you want to have casting and sword, um, while also having a theme of hunting people down uh, in particular. Like, it's good, you have many ways to stack on damage and whatnot. But you can't, you can add damage and you can make hits hit a lot harder and a lot more consistently, but you can't become, you can't get your crits up. However, 
We can achieve this by going through fighter. So we're gonna go through here first. So we're gonna have fighter level, and we're gonna have the bullet points, so then we can copy paste everything from there. this. Copy that. Alright, level one. So, let's look at fighter. It doesn't turn into a rocket. It turns to, like, a really, really long, like, it turns to, like, an evergreen tree or something, where it's, like, like very pine-like. Yeah, it doesn't become a rocket. It's just super pointy. It's super pointy as it becomes a dino, man. So, things we get immediately is... We get... Oh. We get prop and strength and con save. So, even if we're not physically super strong, we have a good chance of not getting pushed around like it's nothing. Um, we at least get a positive for that. And Khan, we're still really good with Khan. Additionally, we could really use any weapon we want. Uh, we also get to pick two skills of our choice. So we've already got... So we're going to get probably acrobatics. And... Yeah, let's get acrobatics. And let's see, what other skill would be most applicable? Because I already have animal handling. I don't really think we're that athletic, ironically enough, despite we have the athlete feet. Um, probably perception. Because I imagine, you know, subtitles often around a lot of the like, forest floor, climbing around, he knows how to, like, look up the tallest tree and get a good eye around. So I feel like Subtile is very aware of his surroundings. We're gonna have leather armor, which means our AC is gonna be 15 at this point. Yes, it would be 15. So pretty good AC. It's it's only one step away from chainmail. That's still really good just off your decks. Um, now we're gonna get two weapons. We're gonna get a rapier and a scimitar. Those will act as sort of our leaf blades, uh, rather if we'd like to stab or slash, depending on our preference of the day. Because I feel like, you know, Septile having blades on them at all times, they are a master of many types of swords. You know, rather if it be poking or slashing, they know, they know how to slice, they know how to poke dokes. They know how to do the hokey pokey. Let's get him the light crossbow as a treat. You know, give some range options, be that bullet seed. That's gonna be really good with our plus four deck, so at this point in the game, these light crossbows will be doing, be hitting for about plus six. To your, to your dice, along with your rapier and scimitar. And we're gonna have Explorer's Pack. Additionally, for this level, we're gonna get a fighting style. For this, we are going to get a uh, two-weapon fighting style. So, this way, uh, when you engage in two-weapon fighting, you can add your ability modifier to damage on the second attack. So, 
with two weapon fighting, there is a mechanic in D&D where you can use a bonus action to attack with an offhand weapon. So say you had a long sword in one hand and you had like a knife in the other. You're going very aggressive. You can use your main action to attack with a long sword and you add your, say, strength modifier. A plus three strength, you add the 1d10 plus three, you know, 1d8 plus three to the damage roll. Really good. But, with the dagger as your bonus action, that's only gonna do a flat d4 for the two weapon fighting. Here, we essentially get two attacks very early on before level five. Uh, just working effectively as it would normally. So that's really good for what we want, especially with a rapier and a scimitar. So essentially, at this point in the game, if we are hitting two attacks, we are essentially going for about 1d8, 1d8 plus 4, and a 1d6 plus 4. So that's about an average of uh, 9 plus... 9 plus 8, so that's about an average of... Let's see, about 17 damage, which is pretty nice at this point in the game, all in one turn, without multi-attack. So we are going in and we're being very aggressive. Just we're getting action surge. Action surge is bonus act. Wait, no, not action surge. We're getting second wind. So with second wind as bonus action, we can uh, get some extra HP back. We can roll a d10 plus our fire level and get that much hit points back. So we can either do that after we go in and need to recover. Uh, or before we we're about to go in and go knocking fights. So, always helpful. Fire level 2 is not going to be super crazy. Uh, at this point, we mostly get a really big ability here called Action Surge. Action Surge allows us to do two actions in one turn. So, with this, we can essentially go, okay, cool. I would like to, instead of use one, so in this case, we can have three attacks in one turn, with two of them being of our action surge with the rapier, and the extra one being a little bit of extra damage with our scimitar as a bonus action. And it will only get better from here. So we can play very aggressively, and it's great. It's fantastic. I love it. Ah. Yeah, second level, second level fighter is very simple, but it's very, it's very nice to have another action. Now we get to the real shit. This is the reason why we went into fighter for the first place. So we're gonna go into a subclass that is often Often, a uh, subclass I overlook or don't really go into. This is Champion. My name, uh, it's, it's, uh, I had a bit of big, uh, I had a big, uh, internal scream, uh, but then it ended up okay. Um, had, had some wizard business. To do today, and it was not it was not wizard business I liked doing. Um, but it ended up alright. Yo, you just got a bird? Do what kind of bird? While you talk about your bird, I'm gonna talk about the main reason why you went to champion. With champion, we get improved critical. This is the main reason why a lot of people may go into, uh, excuse me, to champion, because champion doesn't really offer a lot more other than going, hey, do you want to double your odds to crit? Because with improved critical, beginning when you choose this archetype at level three, your weapon attacks uh, score a critical hit on 19 or a 20. So 
So, why is this a big deal? Oh hell, that's so powerful. That's so fucking powerful. Anyway, so with this, we essentially double our chance to crit. In, uh, yeah, it's your bird now. Especially if it's a young bird, it's definitely yours, because if a bird, if the mom bird seed you had it, then yeah, they don't care anymore. It's your bird. Just be careful, birds are very smart. Alright, so, why is having 19 to crit such a big deal? One, this helps with our goal of increasing our crit rate chance with Leaf Blade. Secondly, having 19 and 20 both being uh, what we crit, we essentially double our chances of getting a crit. And using a d20 to roll for attack rolls, there's always a 5% chance you're going to crit. We have now doubled that to 10%, which is pretty wild. One-tenth of the time, you're likely to crit. And that is only if you're rolling normally. If you're rolling advantage, well, you have much better odds to roll that crit. I know there's a build out there to do champion fighter and, like, a, a barbarian to do reckless crits, and that seems really cool. Honestly, seems like something I'd love to do for a simple level 5 game. Uh, but, yeah. No, it is very good. So yeah, it's very simple, but we're gonna have more chances to crit, and that's gonna be very effective because with our next level, we are going to go hard on crits. So level 4, we are able to get a feat or an ability score improvement. We're gonna opt for the feat. And in Tasha's, in Tasha's goals are in everything, there was sort of a trio of feats where they did stuff relating to different damage types. And here we have Piercer. Now Piercer's gonna be for our rapier here. One is gonna increase our ability score for strength or dex. We wanna boost dex even more. Plus one dex. We're gonna spell check Piercer because I can't spell good despite being a wizard. So, once per turn when you hit a creature with an attack that deals piercing damage, you can re-roll one of the attack's damage dice and you must use the new you must use the new roll. So this way if we're rolling with our rapier once per turn, if we get a really roll dam really low damage roll, like say we got a one or a two, we can re-roll that and potentially get a five, maybe even a seven. You know, a much bigger number. Uh, and essentially have a one time advantage on dice roll on our uh, weapon attack. So, what's a turn? Alright, sit down. Get over to the side there. And additionally, we get, an we get to use an ability whenever we crit. When we score a critical hit uh, that deals piercing damage to a creature, roll one additional damage die to determine the extra piercing damage the target gets. So, normally, how crits work rules is written, they allow for you to uh, double the damage dice. So, here on a crit, normally if you have a rapier, it's going to do 2d8 plus 4 damage, right? Which is an average of about, so, that's about 10, that's about an average of 14 damage in one hit. Mind you, again, we can hit up to three times. But, here, here now that's a 3d8 
plus, yeah, about 3d8 plus 4 damage. And again, this is only on one out of our three possible attacks with two weapon fighting. With two weapon fighting and action surge. So, it could be a very good hit. Now we go to level 5, a good old classic of fighter. I'm gonna double check fighter, see if we haven't missed anything. I don't think we have, I think the only thing we may have missed is the chance to change a fighting style, but we're very comfortable with this fighting style. Yeah. Alright, so here we get extra attack. Now, extra attack for our build is very, very aggressive. And here's why. Right now, we have two attacks naturally from our, our default attacks, right? So we can hit 2d8. If we hit, we could essentially do 2d8 plus 8 damage. But we also have a bonus action attack with our scimitar. So that could be 1d8 that could be 2d8 plus 8 plus a d6 plus 4. Alright, that's pretty cool. Now, with Action Surge, those two attacks from our... Those two attacks we had, those are now actually... Hear me out. Those two attacks? What? They're now four attacks. Because action surge allows you to take another action. The two, the extra attack feature accounts for one action. So we can now do about five attacks around. So presuming we're having one rapier and a scimitar, right? This is about, assuming we hit all the attacks, right? An attack could do about 4d8 plus... 48 plus 16 plus 1d6 plus 4. So on average, I hope I'm doing math right here, on average d8 is a 5, so that is going to be, oh god, that's yeah, about 20, 36, Uh, eight. God, that could be average 42 damage. Just about. Uh, if you hit all of them. If one of them is a crit, then that adds another damage dice. Uh, even one crit. bumps it to about 47 damage. Which is insane. And again, with this damage, you are more likely to roll higher because with one of these attacks, if they're low, you could always go, no, I want it higher actually. So it could be pretty insane. So I wanna I wanna circle back here and go like why oh let's first put down that we are we are the champion. So I wanna circle back a little bit and talk about maybe how uh how Subtile became this sort of local champion, right? We know he's a full hero. Pan, look at the Discord. I didn't notice, but I fell asleep in my head. <gasps> Very important. I understand why you want to stop me midstream for that. Yo, it's so yellow. It's so yellow and round. That is an adorable little bird. If anyone wants to see the adorable little bird... 
All you have to do is go on my Discord and you can see an adorable little bird. Also, you can see all the character sheets of any of the builds I've already made, as well as this one, whenever I, in about a few days. So, check that out if you're interested. We've already done Raichu, Snowrunt, and Pangoro. So if you're interested in any of those kind of builds, check it out. So, I want to circle back to why, how Sceptile became a champion, right? How did Sceptile get a sort of... How did Sceptile get this status of being a champion, right? So... I, I picture Septile as maybe someone who's defended the forest, right? Maybe Septile has... Let's see, what would he be protected it from? Let's see, what are, what are some natural predators of geckos? Natural... Predators... Ha! Ha, huh, funny answer to this, the orca. It's the only predator that hunts down moose. Let's see, what are natural predators of geckos, perhaps? Snakes, birds, spiders. So, alright. In that case. Let's see. Ooh, tropical rainforests of northern South America. These animals are stocked. Oh, Goliath tarantulas. Ooh. Okay, that kind of that kind of inspires me. So, I I really like the idea of like set like in this forest that Septile is from. There's like a bunch of like Ariadoses, right? Like it's infested with them. It's very dangerous. It's very scary for like the young Tricos or even the Groviles to deal with. So, you know, Septile becomes the peak form of his sort of evolutionary line, and he has built a legacy of being this person who is able not to hunt down, but able to just take out very swiftly these Ariadoses. And I know, I know, I know that bug and poison have a very big resistance against grass, but also, I think it's a cool narrative and builds the idea of Septile being a cool underdog protecting against Pokemon that normally he should be very weak to. But this Septile is an absolute Chad. Alright? He is a slayer of Ariados, and that is how he's developed sort of the local champion title around here. I think he's neat. All right, so. Yeah, so here's one really cool thing about Fighter. Fighter is a class where Wizards of the Coast were like, hey, what should we do with Fighter? Like, what should their main gimmick be? And Wizards of the Coast were like, well, we really like extra attack. That's pretty cool. And they're like, yeah, that is really cool. What's their core mechanic, though? And they're like, oh, extra attack's really cool. I like that. So they went, okay, I guess extra attack's good. Uh, what should we make for the subclass? And they went like, oh, well, we can have them do better crits. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we should also make it really cool that we could say... Uh, maybe we could... You know, give one magic. Oh, that's really good. What, what about our other? What should we have as a third option? So for the third option, I thought of the Battle Master, which has like all these maneuvers, right? And they're like, oh, that's really cool. I'd love that subclass. And they're like, yep, that's subclass. It's not the class. So what do they do to compensate for that? For the fact that it doesn't have a gimmick? Well, they gave them a lot more chances to get ability score improvements and feats. So you may notice here, usually a D and D character and another class would have one every four levels. Maybe one at the beginning, depending on if they chose Varian Human or now Custom Lineage. Uh, but here, fighters get him, like, like, every other level. Like, you get an extra one at level six, you get an extra one... 
level 16. Like, yeah, you get two, you get three more ability score improvements than anyone else in the game, which is kind of wacky. So here, we're going to improve on, we're going to do a fun little feat that I'm kind of curious looking at. So, let me check something. We're going to hold off on that one. We are going to go for Slasher. So here, we are going to let us go knocking Futs on both our piercing and slashing damage we have, because we have our Rapier and we have our Scimitar. So here, we're going to cap off our decks with the plus ones, we're going to get Slasher. So let's go to stats, and let's just, let's just fix it. This is, uh, it's just a 20 now. So, now we're doing a lot more damage on average. We are doing the best we can. Let's see, and let's look at the rest of Slasher. So once we turn when you hit a creature, creature with an attack that deals slashing damage, we can reduce uh, once per turn, we can reduce the creature's uh, speed by 10 until the start of our next turn. So... Here, so tell you can, you can move inside here. as well on a crit, because all these feats do something on a crit. Uh, when you score a critical hit uh, that deals slash damage to a creature, you grievously wound it until the start of your next turn. The target has disadvantage on all attack rolls. So now, we can not only deal a lot more damage, but we can support our party a little bit by going in, piercing heavily, and also crippling their movement, as well as allowing them to be very vulnerable to our other players, which is really good. And also, gonna have a real bad time attacking us till the start of our next turn. So... That's very good, especially because our AC now is at least 16. We could, of course, have studded leather armor at this point in the game, because players like to do that, so our AC could be potentially 17, and that's a really good AC. Now, here... Let's see, do I wanna, do I wanna do this thing here? Do I wanna do it here? Let me, let me double check some things. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Let's let's do this now. Yeah, for fun. You know, fuck it, right? Let's add variety is the spice of life. We're going to multi-class to sorcerer here in this next level. So... Here we're multi-classing to Sorcerer, and here's the main reason why. I feel like at this point, we are, we get given, we, we are sort of a local hero, but we're level 7, we're known, we're known people and adventurers, and we get the attention of very powerful people. An arc let's see if there's a grass is there a grass dragon? Other than other than Sceptile, of course. Let's look at because I'm kinda curious. Because I wanna I wanna see if I can build this flavor case. I can build this case of flavor better. <gasps> okay.
Mm, let's see. I really love the idea of a lowland executor. I love the I love the idea of having a lowland executor bestowing power onto bestowing power onto um, Septile, but I kind of feel that. Because the little executor explicitly awakens their draconic power, I feel like they're also a sorcerer. More than that they are a powerful dragon. So. Hmm? You know what? I think... No, okay. Here's, here's what I'm thinking. We have... We have the dragon. So, okay. So, you're in the forest. And this forest is super overgrown. And here, this dragon has claimed the forest. No one else. No other man has entered in, but this dragon has seen you protect its people. The people it values the most. And you make a good bargain with them. So you go, so the dragon summons you into their lair. This lair is a massive apple rotting and oozing at its core. And inside of it is this long green worm of a dragon. And for keeping the peace and making the people very profitable, I feel like Flapple, the ancient dragon, bestows the Mega Stone to Septile to awaken his own inner dragon. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. God, I love Okay, now I'm just thinking about the idea of a ma of a dra of a green dragon having their lair be this giant apple. Like that's really cool. Is a giant rotting apple. Dude, how tall is. How tall is. Giganimax, um. The apple's supposed to be. It's 78 feet, yeah. So that apple's most at 78 feet. That's like 70. That's like at least 7 stories tall. Wild. Yo, and consider. Oh, consider that. Oh, I love the idea that the layer. Okay, I'm I'm going on a complete tangent because now I'm just thinking of like less of building a D and D character, but now just building like a dungeon around like the boss being Flapple of all Pokemon, where the the layer, so like Flapple like, is like a little dragon worm using the apple as like wings, right? But like, okay, what if it's so massive, right? That when it, when it stays No, that doesn't really work in my brain. That doesn't really work in my brain. Oh well, still. I really like I really like the idea of massive draconic worm giving giving power. I love that. 
I love that so much. So we get Draconic Bloodline. So with Draconic Bloodline, we get, first off, Draconic Resilience. We are going to get our base AC. We're gonna get Dragon Scales. Dracon. Dragon. So now our AC is 13 plus dex. Our AC is now 18. Now, yes, we could have done all this with chain with chain mail and a shield, but like we're a dex build, baby, and we're going to enjoy it. And this is without armor. This is with nothing. So that, I think, is a win. Uh, additionally, we are going to get a, uh, as magic flows through your body, we're also going to have one point, uh, one hit point added on to whatever, uh, plus one HP to every level in this class. So we get, we get a little bit more bulk to compensate for the D6s we're going to get here, uh, which isn't bad, you know, never hurts. We can reach Draconic. We have... We have Expertise in Draconic Diplomancy. So whenever we are talking to a dragon and want to do uh, Charisma, like any Charisma roll with the dragon, we essentially get double our frequency bonus, which at this point, we are level seven. So that's gonna be about a plus six added on to any um, charisma checks we make for the dragon. Thank you for the hydrate, Hell Knight. Let's see. And for the dragon type. So this isn't really gonna matter too much for our build. Wow. Because with this for with this build, it really only matters for level six in Sorcerer, and I don't think we're gonna go that far with Sorcerer, unfortunately. Um, so we are just gonna go with the good old green dragon here for our flavor, because I really like the idea of worm dragon. I like the idea of rotting apple dragon giving us power. So originally I was thinking like, oh, I probably want a lightning one because Sceptile, Mega Sceptile has lightning rod, which boosts our spectral attack if we get hit by uh, lightning moves. But like also I think this is just cooler and more thematically appropriate because green, green dragons are also nature based. They live out in the woods and when they die, they make things abundantly more green. So I'm going with that. Now we're gonna have um, Sorcerer 2. That's right, we need another page for Sorcerer level 1. Part 2. So here we're going to go into spells. So we get quite a bit of spells. Now, our Charisma we didn't really invest too much in. Because I was like, ah, we don't need Charisma that much. Oh, I should probably... So, yeah, so these aren't going to be as powerful, but, hey, they're going to give you a bit, they're going to give you maybe more, we'll, we'll maybe look more into utility options here. So, here are some options we are going to look for. 
Let's look at Booming Blade, because Booming Blade's pretty funky. So, let's see. Because I'm kind of curious. Because we could action search this. It may not be the best use of our action search, but we always could. Um, you brandish the weapon used uh, in the spell's casting to make a melee attack uh, with it against one creature within five feet of you. On a hit, the target suffers the weapon attack's normal effects. Then it becomes uh, shattered and booming energy until the start of your next turn. If the willing target moves before the tar uh, moves before, then target takes 1d8 thunder damage. I think that's cool, but for our level of fighting, we would have to burn an action surge to get that really off while also getting consistent damage. Um, and that is if they leave. That is if they move. And we're not at 5th level casting. So, not gonna invest in that, unfortunately. Mold Earth could be pretty fun. We could, uh... Yeah, we can use that to sort of shape the world around us as sort of a... given the powers of nature on our side. So here we can uh, essentially uh, make a part of land... Uh, or you can make an area uh, loosen the dirt. You can instantly excavate it, move it along the ground, and deposit it five feet away. The movement does not have enough force to cause damage but it's like essentially you could fuck around with the earth you can cut you can cause shapes colors or both to appear okay that gave me a heart attack I thought my computer was about to crash uh, you can make cool sculptures as well as you can make a spot of you can make a spot of dirt up to difficult terrain uh, for an hour um, or, no, or difficult terrain into normal terrain, uh, which is pretty wild. Um, though it is only in five foot sections, uh, but you can stack this. You can stack this, have a little bit of extra wiggle room or punish others, especially if you had your slasher. So we're gonna have mold her. Because, yeah, you can do Slasher, reduce the movement speed by 10 foot, and maybe through Quicken Spellcasting, which could be something we get, or Action Surge, you can essentially punish them by also making it a lot more difficult for them to move, such as using half movement to even go anywhere. Which can be very nice. Do, do, do. Bum, bum. Ooh, you know? So, you know, Sunfile has a few bug type moves, and we got a bit of a dragon patron that uses poison. So we can get infestation, uh, where essentially we get a bunch of pests uh, to appear onto a creature uh, that we can see within range. If they fail a concentration saving throw, take a d6 of poison damage and must move five foot in a random direction, decided by a d4. Excuse me. So that could be fun causing a little chaos. Uh, and we can have it as like summoning a lot of little geckos. Like, is it the most optimal? No, but I think that's probably a good fun spell because for a lot of these, we're not looking for optimal right now. Like these are, these are options. Green Flame Blade. French weapon uh, uses spells. Cast time to make a melee attack. Gets one creature within five feet of you. On a hit, the target suffers the weapon's normal effects, and you get to cause a green flame to leap out towards the target to a different creature that you choose. Uh, you can see within five feet. The second creature takes fire damage equal to your spell casting modifier. Ooh, that's pretty cool. So. Okay, so the melee attack is part of the spell. Ooh, then yeah, we want we want green flame blade then.
because although our spell cast amount of power is only one, if anyone's grouped up next to this target, while we are... Oh, it's got a really cool uh, level up here of level five. It does an extra 1d8 to the target. That's cool, but right now, at this point, that just means... Uh... When we do our attacks, uh, I think... I don't know if multi-attack uh, or extra attack is included with that. Let me, let me just look up to be... Because I'm curious. Does green flame blade work with extra attack? No extra attack requires to take an action. Got it. So this would be... Got it, got it, got it. So it would be only one melee attack. Got it. So you'd have to action surge to make that really cool. But hey, it's an option if you don't want to kill a man, I guess. But also it just be really cool about it. Not optimal, but a fun idea. Oh, I like the idea of it maybe being like a vine that lashes out or something. Like you can flavor it as something other than fire. Oh, that would be really cool, actually. So you can just potentially get a bit more damage onto other people if you're not just aiming to kill a man. We can get some poison spray for our poison dragon patron. It's not it's not the strongest spell, but like hey, I feel like it thematically fits. Alright, so now we gotta look at two first level spells. Bum, bum, bum. Let's see, which ones do we want that works? Because a lot of these spells that I'm thinking of are a bit higher level. So, I think for these spells, we probably want to have, because we're multi-classing in this, we're not really going for spells that need saving throws. So let's go for Absorb Elements, because Absorb Elements is a good, um, it's a good reaction spell. Essentially, we can use a reaction whenever we're coming into like acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage to take it in, uh, making us immediately resistant to it. And then when we attack next with a melee attack, we add that extra d6 of damage, which is pretty nice. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Let's see, what other one would we want? Do. Ooh, Expedition Retreat could be really fun because that can make us dash as the bonus action. So we can have insane movement. We can have really crazy movement of essentially, we can move 60 feet as a bonus action. Now, yes, we're limiting our crazy DPS, but it's something. It is a choice and an option that we have. So let's go with that. our first level of sorcerer paste sorcerer sorcerer level two we get font of magic so now we got sorcery points which at this point allows us to uh burn them so we can get more more times to cast spells so this is really more of a chance for us to protect ourselves from any elemental damage and as well just give us more opportunities to do that especially because the reactions and if we're going into a fight or say we're going against elementals we're probably going to be using those a lot especially because when we're dragon type we have a lot of resistance against the more typical elements it also prevents us from having that big ice type weakness that we normally have 
But yeah, this will allow us to get more... More, uh, fun spells. Uh, more chance to cast spells. We got one more spell added. Why don't we make that? Hmm. Let us see, let us see, let us see. Let's get shield. Because shield never hurts. Because that's another good reaction spell that we can add plus five to our AC. So in that case, we are going to have two reaction spells, which is probably what we're mostly going to be using our spells for uh, at these earlier levels. Oh, give me a moment. My hand mirror needs to charge. All right. So now we go on to Sorcerer level three. Sorcerer level three. Now here we get access to meta magic. This allows us to essentially play around with our spells. Now we only have three sorcery points. We don't have a lot, but with these, we can invest them into uh, these spells that can be real funky. Uh, we could do from some fun effects with them. So say we can maybe do a spell as a bonus action instead of a main action, which would allow us to set things up and go real nook and butts. Um, we could also, yeah, so let's look at some of these. So we don't really need distant spells. We're not really going for a lot of ranged spells, and I don't plan on to when we go to our next level. Um, additionally, I don't think we need to be really stealthy about them. Uh, I think what we really want are two spells. Two of them, which, of course, we do. Oh, hey, Dragon Craze. How you doing? How you doing? If you don't know, we're making Sceptile for D&D, &D, um, and we have quite a few goals. Uh, with Sceptile. I'm just gonna give you- I'm gonna give you the lowdown what we've got already, right? So, our goals for Sceptile is make him climb good, make him have his leaf blade so he has more likely chance to critical hit, as well as let him quote-unquote mega evolve. So, so far what we've done to allow that is we went to custom lineage. I was thinking about making him lizard folk because he's a funny little gecko man, but they swim. And this lizard is a gecko. He doesn't swim, he climbs. So we went to custom lineage so we can get athlete right off the bat. This allows him to get immediate climb speed, gives him a good buff on getting getting up in combat, moving around. And we also went really hard on his decks. We made him be doing good. Oh, nice, nice. I played a little bit of Curse of Strahd. I think, I think it's definitely a game that I enjoyed the atmosphere of, more so than I like the game itself, but I think I guess I have a problem with modules themselves. But anyway, we made Sceptile a full hero, uh, and we kind of rounded back to what made Sceptile a full hero, and I, I sort of found out that Sceptile did this, uh, in like a little, like, there's, he lives in a big forest, and he has like a little community of like, other Trico's and other Trico line like folk, similar to Ash's Trico in the anime. And they have a really bad like Ariados problem, like these spiders, which are natural like predators to geckos. And this set tile is the only one who's like really able to fight back against them, despite the fact of them being very effective against set tiles. And he is He's sort of like known as the local protector in that sense. He has got like animal handling to sort of like work with some of the other animals to help out. He knows how to survive the land. He can drive. He has a Kia Soul, I've decided. Um, he knows how to do wood carving so he could do like those cool like wood stick things like in the anime. He also has a shovel and iron pot and he doesn't explain why he has them, but he has them just in case. Uh, this is with some abilities score improvements, but we have mostly made him max out his decks. Uh, we start him off with a fighter, uh, specifically a dex-based fighter, 
He's got a rapier in one hand and a scimitar in the other. Um, he's got two weapon fighting, so he can do a lot of damage in one turn. He can essentially do two. He can essentially do one attack as a main action, as well as a bonus action attack with the other one. Essentially going, um, essentially doing multi attack before he gets extra attack, which is pretty cool. He gets action surge, so he could do about three attacks per round with bonus action. We made him into champion, so we can get that critical hit of Leaf Blade with that improved crit, and that's very nice. Afterwards, we went harder, we went more into the build of like, all right, so we crit. Let's go nuts with critting. So we got Piercer, so our rapiers can do a lot better. So with our rapier now, if we crit, we can add another damage dice. So now our crits are dealing about 3d8 plus 4 at this point in time. It's pretty nice. With, an eno with another bonus action or another attack, depending if we're action surging. Additionally, if we crit, additionally if we roll damage on any piercing attacks, we can re-roll damage. So we're more likely to do real big oofy outfoos when we poke the kidneys. Level 5, we get extra attack, and you can see here, uh, this is the average damage that we would do at level 5, um, if we hit all the attacks. Uh, and even with one crit, no, just a one crit, we do 47 damage, uh, but it could do a lot more if more than one crit. So that's neat, and again, this is average damage. At level 6, we went in to max out our decks through using the slasher feed. This way, when we use our scimitar, and if we crit with the 19 or 20, we can also give them disadvantage, so it's a lot harder for them to attack us and others, and we also get to cripple their movement, which is always just a fun delight. Then we uh, found out a cool idea of having... Um, Septile Mega Evolve by finding the uh, their Mega Stone through uh, a giant uh, flapple, like a Gigantamax flapple, uh, was like this local dragon protecting the area, finding Septile to be a worthy champion of the area, and decided to gift him a Mega Stone uh, to give him some power and. I got into a big tangent about making uh, his lair just the big rotting apple. I really liked it. Um, so yeah, we gave him Draconic Bloodline, giving him a permanent buff to his AC, and uh, getting some extra, getting some fun spells like as a treat, as well as some reactionary spells like Absorb Elements and having movement buff like Speedius Retreat. And now we're at level, we got level two, so we had Shield added on and Sorcery Points. And now we're at Meta Magic. So the Meta Magic stuff we're kind of looking at is going to be, I think, I think we're going to want empowered spell casting for what we want. So we can reroll one damage dice of any spell we do. And additionally, we are going to do... I'm gonna hold off on the other one because I don't recall what some of these spells... Oh, thank you, whole knife for the hydrate. Now you're not annoying me, you're, hit, you're helping me out. So I'm actually gonna look at some of our spells before we commit to the meta magic, because some of these spells I don't remember are bonus actions or not. So we're going here for the main reason why I wanted to go for Sorcerer, and it's mostly these sweet, sweet level two spells. Now, one I want for sure is Alter Self. Alter Self is how we can literally have the Sceptile Blades, like on our on our hand, on our arms. We can literally just grow the cool leaf blades from our forearms now and go knucking futs, which I think is cool. 
with natural weapons. Uh, we can grow claws, fangs, or spines, horns, or any other natural weapon of our choice, and there are unarmed strikes that deal 1d6 uh, bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing damage. That's appropriate to the natural weapon of your choice. As you're uh, proficient with an unarmed strikes. Uh, finally, the tar it is a magic weapon that is plus one to all attack and damage rolls, which is really cool. I think that's neat. This is really just how we can get our physical leaf blades. I don't know, I just think it's neat. It also can make us breathe underwater or change our appearance entirely, but I mostly just want it so I can get four on blades. And it can last up to an hour, and we got a pretty good con. We got pretty decent con, and we got proficiency in con save, so at this point, we're about level... Yeah, we're about level nine at this point, so we would have about, I think a plus four in proficiency bonus. We have about a plus six to proficiency to con saves, which is pretty solid. Uh, so we have a good chance of keeping this spell up even when we are fighting around. Uh, additionally, I want to replace a spell. I want to replace Yeah, so I want to replace... So I'm going to replace Expeditious Retreat. Expeditious Retreat was really a buffer spell. Uh, we don't really need it. Uh, here, I want Shadow Blade as another cool, we like, blade weapon we can summon. Uh, because it would be our dark type room, because Septile can learn quite a bit of dark moves. Um, so, at this point, oh, and this one is a bonus action, so we don't really need Quicken Spell. Uh, you can weave together threads of shadow to create a sword of solid glo solidified gloom in your hands. The magic sword lasts until the spell ends. It counts as a simple melee weapon, which, which you are proficient with. It does 2d8 psychic damage on a hit, and has finesse, light, and throne properties. In addition, you can use the sword as an attack to target. Uh, as advantage uh, if it is in dim or dim light or darkness. And we have dark vision, so we can see in there. Uh, if you drop the weapon or throw it, it comes back as a bonus action. So, here we can do... We can summon the sword and do all of our attacks, essentially doing twice the damage we would with a normal rapier, and go knocking fights with it, which could be really cool. Yo, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. I don't think I can. But I want to double check. So twin spell casting can cast spells that target only one creature doesn't have range of self. Uh, so let's see. Does it have range of self? It is. Okay, so I can't do that. Damn. But understandable. Um... Let me see, because Quick and Wisdom really well. Does. Does Empowered actually even work with this? Magic Sword. Counts as a melee weapon. So. That would probably be. A weapon attack. Instead of a spell attack. Let me check if that if that counts. Does empowered spell work with green flame blade? It's always goes back to green flame blade. Shadow blade. Shadow blade is a spell that conjures a weapon. The spell does not roll any damage dice. It does not apply. All right, because I guess it's not a spell. All right, so in that case, we may not want. I mean, you may not want a powered spell. Quicken spell could be cool for Ultra Self.
So here's what we could do. We could do transmute spell. Just to add some flexibility to any spell types we do for Shadow Blade or even probably our uh, Ultra Self weapons. And we can also add, because Quicken we're probably going to be doing a lot. Do, 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 do. We could probably also do Extended Spell, just because why not? So in that case, we can keep Shadow Blade and Ultra Self for longer periods of time. Like, how long does Shadow Blade last? Yeah, Shadow Blade's normally a minute. We can extend it quite a bit. How long do we extend spell? So yeah, it wouldn't be too long, but it'd be something. It's probably gonna be mostly for, um, mostly for Ultra Self to give us a bit more time to work with. All right, and now we're gonna go back to fighter. That's right, we're going back to our good old fighter. Now we're gonna be going to fighter level seven. Yes. All right, going back to the simple era. All right, here at level seven, we get a martial archetype. Be off. Nope, that's Battlemaster. We don't want that. We want Champion. So we get Remarkable Athlete. So we get half a proficiency bonus to any strength, dex, or constitution check made that doesn't already use a proficiency bonus. Uh, in addition, when you make a long jump, distance can cover increase by the number equal to your strength modifier. So we get jump buff once again, and also have prop in any physical skill we are not. Which is pretty good, because that makes our strength decent. Uh, like our athletics pretty decent, and as well as our stealth and sleight of hand, like a lot of our deck skills. Honestly, we don't have a lot of deck skills. We just rely on just having plus five decks. So it gives us a little bit more to work with there, which is pretty nice. And that's pretty much it. It's not the most exciting level seven, but it's something. But you know what is pretty exciting? We get level eight, which means that's right, it's feet time once again. Once again, we can go knocking pups with feats if we want to. Because we could, we could do either two things. We can either buff our charisma, or we could, we could go crazy with, we can, we can see what we could do with feats. Oh, actually, no, I do know what I want with feats. We looked at it earlier. I want dual wielder now. I would like dual wielder now. So, dual wielder is really a buff to what our entire build is around of having multiple weapons uh specifically mostly the rapier and scimitar though we could also have the shadow blade now um so we get a plus one to ac when we are uh essentially dual wielding so let's get let's just get the dual wielder feed here dualder so plus one ac to a welding. Oh, all right. So in that case, our AC is typically 19, which is real good. Additionally, uh, two weapon fighting, you just have weapon fighting, even with one-handed weapons that aren't light. So this allows us to say if we didn't want to have two uh, scimitars, we could have two real ass rapiers, because rapiers are finesse, but they're not light, I'm pretty sure. Which is pretty cool. You could also draw both, both swords at once, which is pretty neat, but also... But 
yeah. It's mostly just a little buff to our AC, we're mostly going very aggressive, and also it lets us just use anything, really. Like, we could theoretically do wield Warhammers now, which is pretty cool, but instead we'll probably be dual wielding maybe two rapiers, maybe even three if we're using the Shadow Blade. God, we could go full Zoro with this build because we could have the rapier, we could have the scimitar, and we can just Shadow Blade the sim the um uh Shadow Blade it uh in between our mouth. God, though, that actually is really silly. I love that. And especially because at this point we'd have... We'd still have about... If we act in Surge, about five attacks. But yeah, it really helps us out because our whole build is really around doing... Having a lot of... A lot of weapons. Let's see. At level 9, what does fighter level 9 get us, us, us... We get level nine. Ooh, we get indomitable. So indomitable. At level nine, you can reroll a saving throw that you failed. If you do so, you must use the new roll. It can't use feature again till a long rest. So again, this is just a free reroll on any failed check on any failed saving throw. Indomitable. Pretty simple, but can be handy in a pinch. Paste, we go to level 10. Here we get a, a we get a fun thing from our class. We get another fighting style. So we get fighting style two. And let's look at the fighting styles again to see what we would even want. What sort of things can we even buff? We could get defense, get that nat 20 AC with no heavy armor. Which is really cool, because uh, we're not throwing weapons. We could use... We could use Superior Technique to do a little bit more damage. Um, let's check out some of the maneuvers, see if we want any in particular. Because I don't really know if any are particularly... Ooh, actually, we could have evasive footwork to really buff our AC. So, essentially what we could do is we have shield. So, our AC is already 19. So, we can buff our AC as a reaction to what to about 24. And if we're moving, like if someone opportunity attacks us, we could use evasive footwork to expand superior dive, which is a d6. So our AC at minimum would be 25 to possibly 20... About... Yeah, it's either 20 to 20... Wait. It's 24 to 20... Yeah, 24 to... Tw wait. Yeah, it's 24 to 30, which is wild. So we're gonna have... Superior technique, evasive footwork. So yeah, if we move, we can use our superior AI of a D6 to increase our damage to our AC by that, along with shield. We could be untouchable moving around the battlefield, especially at this higher level. go to level 11. Let's see what we get at level 11, level 11. Yo, we get extra attack too! So, we get our second at extra attack. This means now we are doing three attacks normal. So, three attacks normally four attacks with bonus action. So, without action surge, we are doing about 3d8 plus 
we have a 3d8 plus, we have 5, so it's about 15. Plus 6, plus 5. If we action surge, and everything hits, that becomes 68 plus 30 plus 1d6 plus 5. So let's let's do the average here first and then the average on the the big boy attacks here. So average damage here is gonna be 15 to 30 39. Here with the crit. Oh, this isn't even crit, this is just action surge. So, with action surge, all the attacks hit. Average damage is going to be about, so, okay, oh, that scared me. Um, so it's about five, so that's gonna be about 35, 65. That's gonna be nine. So that's gonna be about 74 damage. And if even one of those crit. We're gonna go with Agnes Just We're gonna go big numbers here, right? Even if just one of them crits. Because again, especially if we're in the darkness and we have dark vision, so we can see in the dark, we can go insane. We could do the following amount of damage. So, with crits, presuming we hit all of them, we could do about 12 d8 plus one with, with Pierce, so that's 13 D8. Plus the 30. Plus the D6. Plus five. So that is about 65. Yeah, 65 plus 30, that's 95. Plus nine, that is about 104. And that is if just one of them crits. Which is in fucking sane. Because <laughs> if multiple hit, you can keep adding this. And again, with Piercer, we're more likely to reroll damage. So, this is the fun part. This is where we get to see a bunch of fucking numbers. Alright, now we're at level 12. We get a little, another ability score or improvement. Uh, let's just bump the charisma a little bit. You know, just as a treat. Just as a little... Little little Turkish delight here. Yeah, we'll buff... We'll buff Charisma just a little bit. And so I... Plus two Charisma. Pretty simple. Just, just to help out with our sorcerer spells. Mostly for cantrips. If we really wanted to use those. Get level 13 fighter. We get indomitable too. So here, we're able to do two of the indomitables. So we get to reroll two failed saving throws. If we so desire. And last but not least, we get fire level 14. We're here, 
get one more. Wait. Wait, did I? Oh, maybe. Lake of the Hydra. Let's see, what levels are we at? So we got, we only did three levels. So we're at level 17. Right? Yes, we're currently at level 17. Okay, <gasps> oh, okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it, okay. So here we get another uh, improvement for our champion subclass and we get improved crit the comeback kid fuck it um crit range is now 18 to 20 so if you roll eight so now our crit chance is 15 percent and again if we're using say shadow blade in the dark we have advantage on all these attacks, and we're much more likely to inflict our critical condition, our sort of slasher or piercer effects with critical hits, and we get to go knocking butts. Oh wait, I'm sorry, that's level 15. I went a bit ahead of myself. I went a bit ahead of myself. We need fighter level 14 for real. That was 15. 14, ah, uh, fuck it, we can boost Khan. Let's get a bit more health. Because we don't really need charisma, charisma's more of a treat. So we'll boost Khan a little bit. Get to level oh wow we made a hundred panel 100 slides wow going on to level 16 for fighter let's see what level 16 fighter gets more ability score and improvements let's fucking go uh let's see is there so we got free we're pretty decently rounded um because like i don't feel like we need Gone. Uh, let's just let's just look at feats as a treat, you know, for fun, you know, because we're at the point of the game where we could just go really fuck it, right? Uh, let's see. Do, do. Defensive duelist. What does defensive duelist do? I actually don't know. This is a feat I've never like seen before. Uh, when you wield uh, finesse weapons, uh, which you're proficient with, and another creature hits you with a melee attack, you can use reaction to add your proficiency bonus to your AC for that attack eventually causes you that attack to miss. Okay, but we have shield, which is just better. I, I guess that's m an infinite shield at this point, but I don't really feel like that's worth it for a reaction. Um... Do, 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 do. Let's see. Seven Tracker is not really anything we need because we're already rerolling some damage dice for piercing. Wait, is it just always? Or is it once per turn? Yeah, it's only once per turn. So, not really crazy. Bum, bum, bum. Anything with the drag, because we got we got draconic blood, so let's see what chromatic does. By confusion, you confuse a simple touch of melee attack. Fuse it with the following damage types. Uh, for the next minute, the weapon does an extra D4 uh, choice. You can use it both actions. Oh, and it's not concentration. 
That's pretty cool. That can add some pretty cool chip damage to things. So that could... Ooh, yeah, that's really good, actually. We would be missing out on our little extra attack, but we'd be compensating with some extra damage on every hit with that weapon. Uh, when you take acid, cold, fire, or poison damage, you can use a reaction to give yourself resistance to that damage. You can use reaction number times to be able to the buffer. Ooh! That's pretty good if we ever ran out of uh, absorb elements. We essentially have that permanently without the offensive boost. Yeah, let's get a gift to the chromatic. And I say this because, like, a lot of the dragon types in Pokemon have a lot of resistance to uh, a lot of elements like fire, water, lightning, or at least, you know, we will, uh, and the like. So I kind of like the idea of that going on here as well, and also can protect us from cold weakness. But yeah, no, that's really good. So that can make, if we do all of our attacks, right, which we've done the math, right, this is, this is the average formula. Copy. Now we are adding... Plus, in this case, if they all hit with the same weapon, 3d4. Which now makes, excuse me, the amount we found was 39. Is now so 39 plus eight, so that's gonna be about 40. About 47, I think. Just pretty solid. Pretty solid average damage if we all hit. Ignoring crits and the like. Lastly, oh no 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 wait 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 wait. I am a fool. All right, I guess we're gonna we'll copy paste this one because this one doesn't have a lot in it. Wait, no, no no no, copy, paste. And our capstone is level 17. Or in this case, we get to do a lot. We get we get to do we get to do a real funny fighter thing. And that means more. More. We get action surge two! And fun thing about action surge? Uh so fun thing about action surge. Action Surge uh, does not use a specific part in combat, so it doesn't matter if you've used a bonus action or what, you can just keep using it. So this means we can now do, with Action Surge, with AS, we could do, so we have three attacks currently. Yes, we have three attacks, so we have six attacks. We could do up to seven attacks with action surge and bonus action. So let's let's now do the math if we if we apply our full power, right? So let us go knocking thoughts. So we are doing about six attacks. Uh, no wait. So we are doing three attacks each, so that's about six attacks with the rapier, so it's about 68. Plus. Huh. God. Alright, so that's going to be. Each one's five, so it's gonna be 40 damage. 
plus 64 from our gift of chromatic plus 1d6 plus 4 plus 5. God, that's a fucking lot. The average damage. Wait. Wait, I think I've been doing crits wrong. I think I've been doing the crit calculations wrong. No, I haven't. Okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, so average damage here is going to be about 40... No, it'd be 40... It would be... Six, so that's going to be about 35, 75, plus 12. So, wait. 75 plus 12, that's 97, plus 9. So it's going to be 81 damage. 81, then on a crit, right? Just one of them crits, right? We're just assuming one crits. So if one of the attacks crits, that's going to be 12. No. 13. D8. Plus. This is going to be up 12, so that's going to be about... 60. No, it's still 40. It's still 40. It's only the dice that doubles. Yeah, so it's gonna be still 64. Oh, God. Okay. So that's going to be... 65 plus 40, 105 plus 12, 116, 125 damage. That is average with all this, so it gets pretty crazy. And again, this is only- you know what? Since we're a capstone, let's just see how- what we could do if every one of the attacks crit, alright? Wait, I think I have been doing that. I think I have ass I think I have assumed all of them hit, or all of them crit. Okay, so yeah, I've been doing all of them crit. Cool. Great. Nice. Huh. Got it. Wow. Also, we get Indomitable 2. Or Indomitable 3. So, we can- we can just push off- we- we essentially have Legendary Resistance. So, let's go over- let's go over the full story of Sceptile. Now that we've sort of built the build- since we've built the build, and we kind of know where we're vibing here. So, here is Septile. Septile starts off as a folk hero, protecting uh, the sort of Trico population from these invasive Ariadoses coming in, putting their webs everywhere to trap the, the young geckos. And Septile is bold is a brave, brave lizard-brained hero who uses the nibbleness, uses their nibble movement to cut through their webs and go right at their weak points. He plays on their weaknesses, not on their strengths. In doing so, he had to learn the ways of the blade, learning the finest rapier, having to perceive the area around him with his keen eye, see those 
thinly veiled webs to try and cut through them so he can catch the Aerodoses falling down in their most vulnerable point. Acrobatics to get out of their thick webs when caught in them in moments of weakness. In doing so, he learned the best defense. It was a great offense. He took up, he took up the refined uh, rapier to pierce into the blade, pierce into the, the soft underbelly of the spider, but chose the scimitar to slash through the webs. In doing so, he learned how to go beyond his limits, to go one step further beyond in these moments of terror against the Aerodos threat. After taking care of the Aerodos threat around his humble little village of, Tri of Tricos, Septile had become the champion of his people. He had learned the weaknesses of his foes and how to capitalize on it. He learned how to truly gain the upper hand with one clean move. And as such, some people say that he's lucky, other people say he's skilled. In doing so, finding out these weaknesses, he honed his skills with the rapier first, finding out the ways to get the most vulnerable part of the body doing extra damage on these spiders, as well as other invaders of his home. Doing so, he found out ways to... found out how to fend off on multiple opponents. Yes, he was able to use both hands to go stab and slice, but now he is set to take on five whole men on his own. Some say he could take down five common people, five bandits in just one foul swoop. After his legendary takedown of the bandits that came to um, his humble village of Tricos, he, he learned the ways of slashing, how to slash down people who try to run away and try to get more to invade his land. And as such, he learned how to cripple their movements and allow others to come in and take them out while they try to run like cowards. After his act to defend this forest from bandits and the like, he got the attention of the ancient dragon that lied within the forest, Frapple, a massive draconic worm that lived within a giant rotting apple. And as such, he was summoned there by the dragon to come forth for a great reward for protecting his forest. And he received the Megastone to go to gain arcane powers along with his physical talents. In doing so, Septile grew fantastic scales to defend himself against battle, no longer needing armor. Additionally, he got a bit more vitality. The speech of the dragon and the charms of the dragon. He developed the power of these more toxic dragons, although he never really fully went out with, with the power of poison. But he did capture some magical secrets. He learned how to manipulate the plants around him to make the earth harder for others to move or escape, or even form structures to guide his fellow people. He learned how to summon geckos to ward off people who would invade his home rather be spiders or those who would like to seek out the valuable trees of his land, the rare plants and herbs, exotic spices and the like for their own greed and expansion. He even learned how to, as he would fight many a people, to have sparks of power come out through arcane vines to come out. He even learned the minor act of breathing out poison with a spray to horribly choke up foes. However, his more powerful abilities was to absorb the elements of others that normally he'd be weak to, or even already well against, and use that power against them. And his, and his speed, his speed almost, set, people said, went four times as fast. Then, his defenses grew even more as he grew power to defend himself, not only against the elements, but against blades with his mighty shield and his ability to cast more than, say, common wizards. 
Lastly, Septile did not invest too much into his arcane power, for when he found that he could find blades at any point, these, this power, this power was all that Septile needed to improve his martial capabilities. He channeled the stone to summon to, to either have two things. One, to have weapons on him at any point, to grow from his arms, to have as weapons on the go in case he was ever in danger. Ooh. And lastly, he replaced his speed to gain shadowy blades to come out and attack people with the mere thought of Septile coming after them. This blade was even working very well. Septile would even go into the dark when bandits would lurk around his village, maybe even working with horrible creatures like phantoms, spiders, perhaps even larger lizards or birds after him. Septile was cunning. He would use the darkness to summon the shadow blade, this phantom, this phantom saber, to slash at foes and when they knew not exactly what was going after them, but did more than his rapier could ever. Soon, he honed his more physical talents and learned how to jump really good and also like was really good at other physical stuff. Thumbs up. He then perfected his ability to use both his blades. His, his defensive capabilities were found even more, and some say Septile was found wielding both two long swords once, with great ease. Septile then was known for his moments that should have, woke, should have weakened him pushed him beyond his limits, and he pushed even further, his sheer determination pushing him away from anyone else. Once his well-known evasion became even more superior, as not only would he use arcane wards to deflect people, but also with his great speed was able to almost nimbly dodge any attack that came out of him, having almost an impossible mean of capturing him with any sort of weapon or blade or net. Lastly, his martial arts grew even powerful as he, as his blades became some of the fastest and most wild as he had done damage that no one could ever foresee slicing down mighty creatures in what in about six seconds. Also, he became more charming as he uh, got a bit older. You see Septile, uh... Oh yes, I'll summon a demon most foul. This, uh, the, the, excuse the presentation. Yes, the president is here, everyone. Alright. Yeah, Septile got a lot more charming when the president of Hell showed up. Uh, but no, I, ooh! I like the idea that, um... After this point of becoming a well-known champion of the people, uh... Fuck. Well, sir, fuck, congratulations. You ruined my day, frowny face. Um, I feel like at this point, Septile has found his power, uh, not only physically, but he goes towards Flapple, the grand dragon of the land who's running Apple Lair. And there he sort of learns how to be a bit more diplomatic, to find a relationship with this powerful dragon, to try and gain better control around the area. He also gets a lot more resilient being around this rotting apple that's like really smelly. When, when being along Frapple's side, uh, at one point, times have changed that Septile as he grew to defend his land, it seems a lot less of a heroic story to anyone outside the lands. It seems that someone who has become one, who has essentially partnered with a, with a conniving green dragon. However, Septile, the fear against Septile grows even more as he seems to have found more vulnerabilities when taught by Frapple, who tells him of all the secrets of the bodies of man, 
every weak spot they could imagine. Sev Tile had learned them, and he learned them to protect his people. That's what this was all about. But little did you know these towns were used for. Dear God, were they used effectively. When seen as a loyal, uh, a loyal knight to the great dragon Frapple, Frapple had bestowed upon him a gift. He bestowed upon him the gift of the chromatic dragon, allowing him to always have resistance against an element that he needed, as well as an extra touch of his elemental powers onto his weapons at any time, and leading to his damage to increase furthermore. Lastly, many people I've only known horror stories of Septile, the once grand defender of the deep forests of Hoenn, but now is a whole, is a terror to anyone who dares go against him and his land. He now has gone. Some people have said he, when he strikes, it is like lightning. He smites people almost as if a paladin could, but is with no arcane power. It is only with horrific speed and fury each each one with a chance to strike the most vital points of the body. And as such, this is the story how Septile lived long enough to become the villain. <laughs> so yeah, that's how that's how we make Septile in D&D. <laughs> Oh, my favorite part of this is always just making the fun story of this character, but I really like how it sort of became, like, as I thought about it, I was like, no, fuck, that kind of works, because green dragons are, they're fuckers, they all, they all manipulate you to do the worst things, so I really like the idea of the septile literally being a hero that sees himself, uh, lives long enough to become the villain, but to anyone outside of his people. But, yeah, so, basically with this build, yeah, you get to do pretty insane crits. You get to have a lot of chances to crit. You literally have a 15% chance every attack you have with Action Surge is seven times. Um, and, yeah, it's really scary, and I love it. Um... I would say I would definitely like trying to use this build. I do think Sorcerer was a lot more for flavor here as opposed to effectiveness because I really wanted those level two spells. So like some of the stuff we get from the Dragon Blood is really just to get a permanent AC buff, which is pretty neat, um, as well as um, just really going for level two spells. We didn't really want some of the first level spells like shield and absorb elements is a nice treat but it's not really needed we didn't really need it um but it's all right i do think a cool way to do this build again if i did something like this because it sort of inspired me is, like doing a barbarian champion would be really cool because then you could have like three levels of barbarian and have like that reckless with the crits oh, oh. good shit good shit and with that, I think we're gonna wrap things up. So, just to let everyone know, uh, I am planning to make Thursdays a dedicated uh, Pokemon building Pokemon for D and D. Uh, but catch me on my Twitter, which I hope works this time. Is that working? It is not. So, just give me a moment. Moment, give me a hot second. Ooh, second. Ah, oh, it's so hot. Alright, so if you follow my Twitter, on Sunday I'll be getting a new poll of what uh, you guys want me to cover next. I have a few ideas. Some of them are going to be reused from last week's poll, um, and I'm kind of excited about them. Additionally, if you ever want to see what these character sheets look like, when you're done so you can use them in the future don't worry in a few days they'll be dropped into my discord where 
uh, be in its own little channel, and you can even get a roll to get notifications for when they drop. So, yeah. Uh, in there we already have Raichu, whose goal was to uh, kill an elephant in one shot with lightning, which was really fun. We also got Storm slash Frostlass, as well as Pangoro, and soon Sceptile. Um, so, yeah. Uh, tomorrow is going to be more Pokemon Sword Rock types only, and yeah, it's pretty exciting. We've been going really fast in that game, so I'm kind of interested to see uh, how fast we'll get to more of the later game section. Until then, let's see who we can raid. Yeah, looks like looks like we should raid Boingo because he's one of my because I've been raiding a non VTuber recently who's pretty cool. She was doing a uh, Pokemon Sword with uh, Joltix, but she's not doing that right now. Uh, so we're gonna raid Boingo Rider, who's doing a tier list of who'd be the best fantasy dad. Uh, from fictional characters. So, we're gonna support that. We're gonna support dad rights. Alright. So, thank you for everyone who came by, whether past, present, or future. I hope you have a nice day and evening, and until then, I wish you a bye-bye.